Hi, it's Jenny and welcome back to Soul Digging. So, today I wanted to talk about being uncomfortable. And man, I've been uncomfortable this entire week. I got sick, so I've been physically kind of just in this really icky state. My kids have been home, so that's been a little bit of a challenge. I have an eight-year-old and a four-year-old and it's the middle of summer in Manhattan. And it's just been really tough. In addition to that, I've been going through a lot of shifts mentally and emotionally. Um, I'm at this kind of in-between stage in my life, this, this limbo state of, of ending of an old life and then this kind of new life that is taking place or will, you know, that is flourishing. Um, I've mentioned before, you know, I'm at the end, last leg of a divorce and, and you know, that's an uncomfortable feeling. That's, a, that's to put it lightly. It's very uncomfortable because so much emotion comes up, so much stuff, and you're dealing with another person, and you can control yourself, but you can't really do anything about what the other, you know, it's just this kind of icky, icky, icky space. But anyway, the cool thing about being uncomfortable is that it gives you an opportunity to really look at what needs to change, what needs healing, and what needs focus. Our initial reaction is always to run away from uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable feelings. Um, but what I've learned in the last 10 years of massive change and massive uncomfortableness uh, from every which way you can turn um, is that the best way is to really lean into that stuff and to really go in and and just figure out, you know, like dig deep and get, get, just get all up in uncomfortable space and be like, what, what do you want to show me? What do you want to tell me? What, where am, you know, where do I got to change? Where do I have to shift? And I think that helps you kind of feel a little bit more in control as opposed to hiding under the covers and wishing that it would go away because it's not going to go away and it might go away for a little bit, but then it'll come back in some other way. Um, in some other form, in some other person, in some other fashion, because it's shit that we got to get, got to go through. We got to deal. Um, there are a few tools to help you kind of determine, um, you know, where you need to, to make the shifts and changes. Because sometimes you might feel icky and you don't even know why. Um, so, you know, obviously there's journaling and there's meditation, which are time-tested, old proven tools that, you know, a lot of us kind of don't want to do, but I mean, they've been proven, they totally work. Now, if those are not your things right now, that's not in your bag, in your tool bag, there's other things that you can try. One is a really awesome tool that I learned from my, my coach, my training, quote, my coach, life coach training. Oh my God, sorry. Um, I'm like all nasally and stuff, but anyway, it's called the Body Compass Tool, and it was taught by Martha Beck, um, which was the coaching course that I took. Um, and you know, I'm gonna put the instructions below because it's gonna make this video way too long if I go through it and I talk about it. But just to give you an overall gist, it's a way of figuring out how your body is, how your body reacts to yes and no. Because sometimes, you know, we're in situations where we don't really know oh, is this really good for me? Is this what I want to do? If this is, you know, is this for me? Is this not for me? And we're not able to, you know, a lot of us are so disconnected with our bodies that we don't know how to read it. So these, this tool in particular helps you kind of determine what's your yes, what's your no, and helps you kind of gauge when other things come up in your life. And so you can notice how your body reacts to it. Another thing that I've done is I kind of, I'm a human pendulum. <laughs> a pendulum reads, it's kind of an extension of your intuition. Um, a lot of people use physical tools um, like a, an actual pendulum. And, you know, but if you don't, in a pinch, use your body. So one thing that I, you know, I've done is that I, um, I ground myself to the earth. I close my eyes, even if I'm in the middle of the street and I have a decision that I have to make and I'm not really sure what to do. I ground myself to the earth and I ask my body to show me a yes and then I ask it to show me a no. In my case, a yes is I move forward, a no is I go back. So now whenever I'm somewhere and I'm kind of in this place where I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do, I ground myself to the earth. I imagine roots coming down and 
just connecting to the center of the core of the earth. And I just breathe and I stand there and I say, is this blah, blah, you know, and I ask a yes or no question. So is this, let's say just for argument's sake, is this restaurant a good place for me to go? Um, I can get a yes or a no. And, you know, you can try it with so many different things, but it's a way of your body separate from your mind being able to help you and guide you. Um, so, you know, those are a few tools that can help with, with um, in those moments of being uncomfortable. But don't shy away from feeling uncomfortable. Really kind of lean in and go into that space and, and embrace it because that is this magic place where you really can get to to some answers and really get to that real healing that needs to happen because when stuff comes up that makes you feel uncomfortable that's things that need to be addressed and um, the more we go forward the more control we have over where we want to go in our lives and the directions that we're going so until next time have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you soon